the the this position you've taken that says that you're not afraid of walking away from it uh, which no, most people are probably not be too afraid to be outspoken do, do you think this was not just your family but also having a godfather like Barry who'd been there done that and then also not... having having a passion about what you want to do that you could be very vocal about protecting your legacy and identity I'm not afraid of nothing when it comes to this business I'm fearless and that's why I am where I am I didn't give in to the BS I didn't give in to it that's why I walked away from it as a as an artist. It's like, why do this? Why it's all it's already set in stone. You can only go so far as a black musician or a black artist. The, the, the boundaries have already been set, whether you know it or not. You can only get so far. Of course, they let the you know the gatekeepers get through. You know, you, you have your big black artists, but they're all women. And that's by design. That's by design. It's all by design. You can only go so far. And if people want to, you know, talk about it, who who think they know what they're talking about, they can say whatever they want. But I've been in it. I've I've seen it. I've I've had the knowledge. I know the knowledge. I know what the game is. I know what's up. It's like, you know, and like I said, I'm a thick skin, so you can talk all you want, but I've I've been in the middle of it. I know what it's about. So I'm fearless when it comes to that. In the midst of you doing your second album, you um, is that when you decided to take the the Ribbon Nation tour, or had you completed your second album when that when that came up? No, I was actually writing for my second album when I was part of the Nation, the Rhythm Nation tour. But then, how did you get even? How did that even be a thing that somebody would actually you get invited to be a musical director when you uh, uh, have a successful debut album? You're, you're doing you're doing amazing as a producer. Who does I think it's you? because I was already at that point. I was already done as an artist. Oh, that's I was your first album. Yeah, because I really didn't want to do my second one, really, because it was just so much BS. It was just so. Yeah. No, I'm deep, man. If <laughs> I can sit here and tell you, I and I'm speaking only of my experience as a black artist, as a black musician, as someone who was extremely woke at that time. Um. Uh, there's a lot going on. A lot. I was, you know, I, I really didn't. Uh, and it's not to say that I, I didn't get the recognition because I did. But the thing was, I really didn't care about that. But when you had like, I had like three number ones at that time. And it was like, okay. I had somewhat of a good run at that point. And then I, I can't get invited to the Black Men United, you know, scenario. It's like, wow, you have all these artists here and I couldn't even get a call. To, I wasn't even invited. And then that's when what all, everything my godfather said at that point kicked in. He says, OK, this is a doggy dog business. It's very political. It's about who you know. It's about the narrative of the situation. I think out of all the things, that was the one thing that hurt me the most that I wasn't even invited to something that I really wanted to be a part of. It was the Black Men United uh, situation. Uh, you know. Everybody else. Even even my friend at the time, even uh, Gerald Levert called me and said, man, you ain't part of this? You, you, they didn't call you? I was like, no. He said, man, that's messed up, man. He said, man, let me see what... I'm like, no, don't even... G, don't even... It's, it's all good. All my friends, all my peers... They were all invited, but just for some reason, I just was not worthy of that. And that made me change my entire outlook on the business after that. I'm like, okay, it's even, not even about, you know, because people always say, oh, well, you know, it's the white people in the business. It's, it's, the, it's the black people too. Uh -huh. You are, the black people are part of this European system. So in order for them to make it, they got to be like them. Yeah. They got to act like them. They got to move like them. I don't move like that, you know, but in order to be successful, that's you got to move like them in order to to be successful. Wow. So that hurt me. 
that was the one thing I can say out of this entire business that that really affected me because I wanted to be about that. I wanted to show that, hey, I am part of a of a system of a or of a collective that's really about black people. And I wasn't invited. Hey, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. If you love what you watched, there's over 100 artists that we've interviewed. So please check out the videos. Remember to like, share, honor, and subscribe. But better still, become a member of Halftime Chat and get exclusive videos ahead of time. But thanks for watching. Take care.